The conventions for inorganic nomenclature are summarized here. There are two primary considerations. We need to consider whether the bonding is covalent or ionic, and whether we are interested in the entity as an acid or not. What is common to all inorganic nomenclature is that the elements in an inorganic entity are written in order of increasing electronegativity. So in the example, the first element is most electropositive and the last is most electronegative. These are some common monoatomic ions. For cations, the element name is unchanged, but ion is added at the end. For anions, the element name is changed to end in IDE, and ion is added at the end. If an atom has more than one oxidation state, the oxidation is, re is reported using Roman numerals after the element. These are some common polyatomic ions. There is no systematic nomenclature for polyatomic ions. Many of the names are historical. There are two trends that are of interest. First, ions with multiple negative charges can add one or more hydrogen atoms and still be an ion. The nomenclature adds hydrogen to the name, which is consistent with the electropositive to electronegative progression. Atoms with more than one oxidation state can have multiple oxygen atoms attached. These are called oxo anions. Note the chlorine and sulfur progressions. The nomenclature for this anion progression follows the pattern. We start with hypo blank ITE, then it is blank ITE then it is blank ATE and then we have per blank ATE. In general the ATE entity is the most stable. You are expected to know the names of the monoatomic and polyatomic ions. This is a summary of the rules for denoting oxidation states in chemical names. If the bonding is covalent and, then the, and there is more than one possible molecular formula, the number of each atom is specified using a prefix. If the bonding is ionic and there is more than one possible oxidation state, the oxidation state is specified using Roman numerals. When hydrogen is bound ionically, that entity is often an acid. When we are interested in the ionic properties of the entity, we use the ionic name. When we are interested in the acidic properties, we use the acidic name. This slide reminds you how to change from ionic to acidic nomenclature for binary and related acids. For example, Glass is etched with hydrogen fluoride because the fluoride ion is responsible for the etching. This slide reminds you how to change from ionic to acidic nomenclature for oxoacids. Simply, anything ending in ATE changes to ic acid, and anything ending in ITE changes to OUS acid. Ionic entities are often hydrated, meaning that the solid contains a fixed number of water molecules in the chemical structure. Cobalt 2 chloride is interesting because anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride is blue, while cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate is pinkish red. If you travel to humid climates, you may notice that people mix some rice with the salt. Both rice and salt, sodium chloride, are hygroscopic. 
they absorb moisture from the air. Without the rice, salt forms clumps as it hydrates. Rice is more hygroscopic and preferentially absorbs moisture, allowing the salt to flow freely. Conversely, people in arid climates add a piece of bread or a moisture disc to brown sugar. Brown sugar is efflorescent. It gives off water. Hydrated brown sugar is light and fluffy and easy to use in a kitchen. Anhydrous brown sugar is a hard solid. Of course, there are some exceptions to the convention of writing formulae from electropositive to electronegative. Some common exceptions are shown here, with an explanation of why the exception exists. Honestly, the only truly valid exception is when you are providing bonding or structural information with the exception, like shown with sodium hydroxide, sodium acetate, and acetic acid. Sadly, you learned more organic chemistry in high school than what is in your university textbook. We do need to review the basics of organic nomenclature because you will see it in this course. Organic chemistry is based on the backbone of one or more carbon atoms. The name of these is presented here, methane, ethane, propane, etc. Hydrocarbon backbones are boring. They are unreactive except in combustion until you add a functional group. Here are some common functional groups involving nitrogen, oxygen, and the halogens. R represents a hydrocarbon backbone. It is also called an alkane. As you progress in organic chemistry, you will learn about functional groups that involve sulfur, phosphorus, and most other elements on the periodic table. In this course, you are expected to be able to name and write the chemical formula of simple organic entities containing zero or one functional group. Fossil fuels are primarily hydrocarbons. Here are the commercial uses of hydrocarbons. Most homes in Alberta are heated by natural gas. Automobiles typically operate on either propane, gasoline, or diesel. Lighters and camping fuel is primarily butane mixed with some propane. With increasing chain length, we get to things that are more viscous and eventually solids. The asphalt on the roads is a long chain hydrocarbon mixed with gravel. I want to focus on gasoline, diesel, and aviation fuel. Gasoline and diesel are simple mixtures of hydrocarbons, with some hydrocarbons added to give the desired octane rating. Aviation fuel is a carefully blended mixture of specific hydrocarbons. Aviation fuel contains only even-numbered hydrocarbons because, interestingly, the melting point of even-numbered hydrocarbons is lower than odd-numbered hydrocarbons. This is important because the external temperatures at 10 to 12 kilometers in altitude range from minus 40 to minus 60 degrees Celsius. You really don't want your jet fuel to go viscous and stop flowing in flight. Looking back at diesel fuel, diesel fuel has to be adjusted seasonally. Number two diesel fuel is the summer blend. If used in winter, this fuel becomes too viscous to flow in an engine. Number one diesel fuel, the winter blend, has fewer heavier hydrocarbons, which allows it to flow in colder temperatures. Number one diesel fuel is too volatile in summer and burns incorrectly in automobile engines.